What's up, peoples? It's Gendo here, and welcome back to another Chicago Fire vlog, where today, the Chicago Fire are going to be taking on the LA Galaxy, or more specifically, the Chicago Fire are going to be taking on Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yes, everyone knows the story by now, that LA Galaxy were able to purchase Zlatan on a free, and not even take up a designated player slot. They used a lot of their targeted allocation money to buy down his contract, so that they don't waste the designated player spot on Zlatan. And of course... You really don't care what type of position that he takes up, whether it's a designated player or not. Zlatan is going to make your squad a lot better. And it showed in his very first match versus the expansion LAFC side in the first ever LA Derby. Scoring a brace. Didn't score at all in the second match. I don't remember who it was against, but still... Zlatan and the LA Galaxy are pretty much doing exactly what the Chicago Fire did last year. Where they were kind of wallowing... At the very start of the season, they sign a superstar, and now all of a sudden they're looking to try and take the league by storm. And with Zlatan at the helm, I think that the LA Galaxy can actually do it. It's just that it's way early in the season. We don't know how it's going to pan out. However, we do have to make mention that Zlatan is probably going to have a field day against the Chicago Fire to, because the defense has still remained the issue for the Fire. They are not all that concise and cohesive along the back line. So much so that Velko Panovic is now starting to use Bastian Schweinsteiger as more of a sweeper. He's pushed him all the way back from the midfield to the defensive line to try and at least have some sort of defensive stability. So it's now more of a five at the back instead of four with two midfielders, two wingers, and a striker up top in Nikolic. So if Bastian can get the defense in tip-top shape, especially versus somebody like Zlatan. And it's not just Zlatan, though. LA Galaxy do have themselves a decent squad this year. But, of course, Zlatan is the main threat that we need to watch out for. I still think, however, that uh, the Chicago Fire defensive line is not prepared to go up against somebody like Zlatan's talent. And I honestly don't think that the Fire are going to be winning today. Weather conditions aside, it's, it's not the 70 degrees Fahrenheit it was a couple of days ago. It's... It's just about 40. It's a steady rain here. It's going to be a miserable time for everyone involved. And it's supposedly a sellout here at the uh, the game today. But I still think that the, the people that are going to be joining just to watch Zlatan, I think Zlatan is going to work his magic. And I think the LA Galaxy are going to come away with a win. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 2-1 to the LA Galaxy. In my mind, I think it's probably going to be more. But I'm going to say conservatively 2-1 to the LA Galaxy. Hopefully the Chicago Fire prove me wrong and at least get a point here at home, but all remains to be seen. So let's go out to Toyota Park and let's go watch the match. So the lineup for the Fire has just come out and it looks like they're going to be in a 5-1-2-2. So they're going to have three center backs, two wing backs, defensive mid, two midfielders, and two strikers. And as expected... Uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger is, in fact, going to be a center back. Uh, Dax McCarty is going to be the D-mid. We're going to be having a winger played as a center mid. Elliot Collier is going to be dropped back as a midfielder. That is strange, to say the least. Uh, no Alexander Katai in the lineup at all, the starting lineup at least. And we're going to go with a 35, 36-year-old Alex Gordon, or Alan Gordon. I don't even care about his name anymore because he's not a good player. Uh, running alongside with Nemanja Nikolic. So it's a very strange lineup to say the least. And honestly, I'm still going to go with my score prediction of 2-1. I just don't see us winning it all today, especially with that lineup. <laughs>
time, Slaton gets his damn goal. Piss poor. And kickoff. So the Fire lose 1-0, but in all honesty, it could have been even worse than that. Zlatan had three or four shots on net, was able to get the one and only goal today. Uh, unfortunately, it was just a defensive miscue across into the box. Zlatan heading it back across the face of goal. Richard Sanchez was already diving one way, so he couldn't have gotten the other side. However, Richard Sanchez, in the three other shots that Zlatan took on net, was able to stop them all and was able to get cleared away relatively easily. But in all honesty, <clears throat> tale of two halves, and mostly it was the fire looking very conservative, very defensive, just basically trying to weather the storm, pun very much intended, uh, in the first half, just trying to not allow the wind affect how they played. Now, the wind was going from the north side to the south side of the stadium, so LA Galaxy was attacking the south end first, they had the wind in their favor. Second half, the Chicago Fire had it. And it just looked like that whoever had the wind had the advantage. In the first half, LA Galaxy was pressing, 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 was able to get that stoppage time goal. Chicago Fire in the second half made a couple of changes, looked to be a little bit more aggressive, and it's just that their passing looked to be a lot more concise. Their attacking movements seemed to be a lot better, a lot deeper within the LA Galaxy half. And I want to say that maybe just, you know, taking a bit too much out of this, but I think the wind did play a big factor into this match. However, wasn't too happy with the tactics. I think that's not starting Alexander Katai right away did factor into it because we would have loved to have had some of his uh, attacking movement going in the first half. And the second half, coming in as a substitute, helped out a lot for us to at least have some chances on net of our own. However, I think on the day we only had about two shots on target, and that is not good enough. We need to get better offensively. Dax McCarty's press conference, he said it himself, Leo Messi's not walking through that door, and he's right. We don't have anybody at this point in time that is as good as Leo Messi. It doesn't look like anybody's stepping up to be a playmaker. Bastian Schweinsteiger's getting lost in the shuffle. Dax is... Nemanja Niklic not really showing uh, decent signs of competence in front of net right now, but that could be just be because of everybody else around him. Niklic is a poacher, by the way. So the team needs to realize that, uh, yes, it's still early, but what you do early season is going to affect how you play the rest of the way. And, you know, just take away the weather. Both sides had to play in that cold, in the rain, in the wind, and the fire just looked very sloppy uh, compared to the Galaxy. So uh, it's a loss. It's, uh, I think that's dropping us down near the bottom of the Eastern Conference. And we really need to really need to start picking it up, really, if we want to make a shot at the playoffs again this year. Now, we don't have another home match until May 5th, which is against the Atlanta United squad that is, of course, you know, hot and up and coming and may look to be one of those teams that are going to make a push for the top of the Eastern Conference this year. So we're going to host them in May 5th. Got a couple of away matches in between that time. But once again, I would like to thank you very much for stopping by the Chicago Fire Vlogs and I will see you on May 5th. So take care, peace out and have yourselves a wonderful day.